Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian. Today, we will study 2 Peter chapter 1. If you miss any of our previous studies, you can always go to our website. It is kuim.org or to our YouTube or SoundCloud channel. It is Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian. All our teachings are posted online. Before we continue today, let's have a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity for your children to gather to glean from your word. Your word is truth and it has the message of eternal life. We pray that you will, by your Holy Spirit, open the eyes of our understanding. Give us revelation, knowledge and understanding of, of the truth of your word. Help us to be doers of the word of God. By your spirit, we pray that you will continue to give us the desire to abide in your word always. Heavenly Father, help us to understand that all things that pertain to life and godliness have been given unto us through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Help us not to look outside for revelation. But always look inside your word for revelation. Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us. Your thoughts towards us are great and innumerable. For everything that you have done, we will not take any glory. But we say, all glory, honor, and power, they belong to you forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. I welcome you, my good friends. Today, we will study second epistle of uh, Peter. So second Peter chapter one is what we're going to cover today. We just finished the first epistle uh, last week. So let me give you a brief background. This epistle was written by Peter. You know, Peter a very close friend of Jesus, one of his inner circle, one of the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. Peter was the one, one of the apostles who was with Jesus Christ at the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus Christ was transfigured in their presence. Jesus Christ changed his name from Simon to Peter, which means a pebble, a small stone. And, uh, I want to compare first epistle of Peter to second epistle of Peter. It will help you understand where we're going or where we are at this point. Now, in first um, epistle, Peter addresses the danger from outside, which is trials and tribulations that come to Christians. And he encouraged Christians to be strong and bold and understand that God is always with us when we go through trials and tribulations and also to live our lives in the midst of trials, life, the life that will bring glory to God. He encouraged Christians in his first epistle to look past the present uh, trials and tribulations, but to look at the glory which will be revealed in us when Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, returns. In second epistle, Peter addresses the danger from within. The danger which comes from uh, deception, from false prophets. So he tells us how to handle that. He says, the key to dealing with false prophets is to know the word of God. If we know the word of God, then it will be easy for us to fish out these uh, heretics and to root out their heresies. This is a very uh, simple summary comparing first epistle of Peter to second epistle of Peter. We're going to go ahead and continue. Verse 1, Simon Peter, 
a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Peter calls himself a bond servant. A bond servant means um, someone who is a servant or a slave by choice. Now we get this concept from the Old Testament. If we go to the Mosaic law, it says that uh, if someone is your slave for six years, at the seventh year, you must let that person go free. But once in a while, when the seventh year comes, there are some servants who will say, I don't want to go free. I love this master so much. I want to remain his servant forever. Then the law says that the master will take this servant to the door post, to the gate, and will pierce his ears and then put an earring there, which means he is now a servant uh, forever, but servant by choice. This is supposed to be our attitude when we serve God. When we advance the kingdom of God, we should do it with all open heart, with happiness and joy in our heart, not by constriction, not by uh, 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 persuasion or by pressure, but with joy in our hearts. He also calls himself an apostle. An apostle means someone who is sent. You know, Peter started as a disciple of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, graduated to an apostle. So Jesus Christ sent him out. He says here that uh, he's writing to believers and he used the word, those who have obtained like precious faith. What is he talking about here? He's talking about the way we come into the kingdom of God. It's only one way. You are saved by grace through faith. So by faith, we all come into the kingdom of God. Our righteousness in God is the same. Because this righteousness is not the righteousness of you and I. But it's a righteousness that is from Jesus Christ. This is why in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may be made the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So it is through Christ Jesus that we become the righteousness of God. So every one of us, we are the same in the sight of God. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 28, he says, For there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither free nor uh, uh, a slave. Neither male nor female, but we are all one in Christ Jesus. So in the kingdom of God, we don't have any second-hand, second-class citizens. <laughs> no, no, no. We are all in the same, equal in the presence of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 2, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Here he talks about uh, knowledge. The knowledge is talking about here, the Greek word is epignosis. Epignosis means uh, uh, experiential uh, knowledge. It is a knowledge that is put into practice. So he's talking about those who are the doers of the word of God. There is knowledge we call gnosis, which is just uh, intellectual knowledge. That's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about an experiential knowledge. Knowledge that are, uh, uh, is now in practice. So he says, to the knowledge of God, the experiential knowledge of God, peace and the grace is multiplied in our lives. Through the knowledge of God, we understand that uh, everything we receive from God, salvation, Mercy, 
forgiveness, love, kindness, providence. Every one of them is based on grace. Not because of what we do or what we have done in the past. And once we understand this through experiential knowledge of God, then peace is multiplied in our lives. We are no longer scared. We are no longer troubled. Thinking that if we miss the mark, God is going to strike us from heaven. He's going to punish us. Now, rather we come to the knowledge of the truth that uh, God, our, our position in God is through Jesus Christ. Not because of what we do or what we have done in the past. And because of this, peace is multiplied in our lives. The peace of God is multiplied in our lives. So that's what he's talking about here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, continue in verse uh, 3. It says, As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and uh, virtue. Everything we need to live a successful Christian life is found in the knowledge of God. Everything that we need to be conformed to the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is found in the Word of God. Everything that we need to have a successful marriage life, successful business, to work in divine health, to have a, 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 a providence from God. He said everything. <laughs> we find everything in the word of God. You see, we are not going out. We are not going outside the word of God. Looking for revelation. People going from one church to another in search of a special revelation. That's what they call it. Calling each other on the phone and say, saying, have you any revelation for me? <laughs> Hoping that someday they will wake up and get a version 2.0 of the word of God. He said, every answer you need to live a successful Christian life is found in the word of God. This is why it is very important to have a expository teaching in the body of Christ. Because through uh, uh, expository teaching, we have uh, 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 the, the word of God in context and also with the right emphasis. This is why it is very important that we put our nose in the word of God so that we know what the word of God says. We don't just listen to it teachers only because the teachers could be wrong themselves that is why uh, paul says uh, a story to show yourself approved for a workman that needs not to be ashamed rightfully dividing the work the word of truth prove all things and hold fast to that which is true the importance of the word of god because the more we know the word of God. The more we know the things that belong to us in Christ Jesus. In verse 4 he says. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. That through this you may be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the word through lust. It says that through the knowledge of the word of God, we lay hold of the promises of God for us. Through the knowledge, we come to the awareness of the promises that are available for us in the word of God. There are so many promises in the word of God. Promises that will lead us to become partakers of the divine nature of God. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
promises that are uh, when we cooperate with the uh, uh, leading, the prompting, the direction of the Holy Spirit that is now in us, every day we are conformed to the image of Christ. Every day we are molded into that uh, ship. We, are, we, 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 we come to that path that leads to uh, uh, the image of Christ. So through the knowledge of the word of God, we lay hold of these promises. Someone uh, did the, uh, um, the, the search and found out <laughs> that we have more than 7,000 promises in the word of God for us. <laughs> what do we do with promises of God? Someone said that I memorize them. <laughs> Another one says, I tell other people about it. <laughs> and someone says, I lay hold of them and I make them mine. <laughs> this is the right way to look at it. Every promise we find in the word of God belongs to us. So as a matter of fact, wherever you see whosoever, Change that whosoever. If it is a promise, change that whosoever to me. It belongs to me. It's talking about me. It, is, it belongs to me. So you lay hold of it. Promises like uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added unto you. Promises like uh, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Promises like, uh, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Promises like, uh, by his stripes, we are healed. There are so many of them in the word of God. That is why we got to search the scriptures and find out the promises that belong to us in the word of God. And once we find them, we lay hold of them. And we make these promises ours. The more we find out what the word of God says, the more we become. For the Bible says, we all with an open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of God, are changed to the same image, from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of God. So by the power of the Holy Ghost, we are transformed every day, to become partakers of the divine nature of God because we've come to the awareness of the thing that belongs to us in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are making progress today and I'm so excited. So we're going to go ahead and continue. In uh, verse 5, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. <laughs> Here he talks about the fruit of your salvation. Remember that the root of your salvation is by grace. You don't do anything to be saved. For it is by grace we are saved through faith. It is what Jesus Christ did for us. That's how we are saved. We receive that by faith. But after you are born again, through the power of the Holy Ghost in you, you are now expected to bear fruit, fruit of righteousness. <laughs> you are now expected to give a corresponding action to that faith, that saving faith. Because James says, faith without works is dead. Now we are supposed to have some kind of manifestation in our mannerisms. That someone can identify, looking at the way we live, will say, yeah, there is something different about this one here. 
So now he's telling us that uh, this is the part that we got to play. Now we will be involved in achieving this one. By our cooperation with the Holy Spirit of God. We, don't, we do not remain baby Christians forever. That's what he's talking about here. He says, I want you to make spiritual progress. After you were born again, don't stop there. I want you to uh, 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 begin that process of uh, being conformed to the image of Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost that is at work in you. So now he gives us some examples. These are some characteristics <laughs> of a Christian life. He says, to that faith, the saving faith, he wants us to add virtue to it. What is virtue? Virtue means uh, moral excellence. Somebody got to look at you and see something different from other people. And he says, add knowledge to that. Knowledge of the word of God. So that you know what the word of God says. And he says, add uh, um, self-control to knowledge. And uh, perseverance to self-control. What is perseverance? Is the same thing as patience. You know, being the same. With the same faith, being the same, maintaining the same faith all through the time. So that you are not moved by what you hear or by what you see. But you only move by what the word of God says. He says, add uh, godliness to perseverance. Godliness means to be right bef bef before God and also before your fellow a, 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 a human being. To godliness, he says, add a brotherly love. This is Philadelphia, the Greek word. This is the reciprocal love. The love that will say, because you are nice to me, I will be nice to you. <laughs> Because you always uh, agree with me and work at peace with me, I'm going to work at peace with you. This is the, the law that will always expect something in return. So he says, start from this one here. <laughs> but don't stop here because he wants us to add a godly love to it, which is agape. Now agape is the giving love. The love that God bestowed upon us. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The love that the uh, Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This is the love that does not expect anything in return. This kind of love will always uh, endure all things. Will hope all things. Does not get puffed up with pride. This is the kind of love he does not put into account how it is offended. This is the kind of love that forgives. This is the kind of love that uh, will always put other people first. This is the kind of love that he's talking about here. So he says, uh, I want you to walk in this kind of love. The Bible says, uh, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. So there is a part, this is a part that we got to play. After we get born again, there is something we got to do. Something is expected of us. And that thing is very possible when we yield to the power of the Holy Spirit of God that is work at work in us. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we call it spiritual progress. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are now in verse 8. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to a blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. This characteristic we just talked about now, about seven of them, Peter is saying here, he says, if these things are in you and they're growing in you, he says, you will no longer be a baby Christian. <laughs> you will always live a successful Christian life. If these things abound in you, you will be the light of the world. In your word, you will be the light in that place. If these things are bound in you, you will be an oasis of love in a troubled world. If these things are bound in you, you will be the faithful in the midst of the faithless. If these things are found in you, he says that you will always walk in the experiential knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He brings, in a, he brings in a contrast here. He says, but if these things are lacking in you, he says, you will remain a baby Christian. There will not be any spiritual growth in you. You become the one who has forgotten that uh, the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for our sins was not only for the sin only, but also it is the enablement of, for us to be more than conquerors, to live a very successful Christian life. This is why he, 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 tells, he tells us to uh, grow, to, to, to make every effort. So that we don't remain baby Christians. So there is a spiritual growth in our lives. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Baruch Hashem Adonai. In verse 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and the election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Examine yourselves. Examine your growth after you got born again. And see if you are making any spiritual progress. Or if you are just maintaining. Or if you are backsliding. Do not live a life of uh, if I can just make it. No. But live a life with future in mind. Live a life of uh, advancing the kingdom of God. A life seeking first the kingdom of God and his own righteousness. Do not stop there once you get born again and say, after all, uh, I can go to heaven now when I die. No! He's telling us here now that uh, even though you will be in heaven, but our positions in heaven will not be the same. Your position in the kingdom of God will be depending upon what you did for the kingdom of God. You're going to receive rewards based on what you did in the body of Christ. This is why Jesus Christ said, do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth. We are moth and the rust destroy. We are thieves breaking and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. We are neither moth nor rust destroys. We are thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. 
Paul in 1 Corinthians tells us about the reward that will come to us. He tells us that uh, everyone's work will be tested with fire. And he says, those who built with uh, silver, gold, or precious stones, their works will be saved. They will receive rewards. And you know, Bible talks about different kinds of a crown. There is crown of glory, crown of righteousness, crown of life. But it says that those who build with a, with a straw, with stubble and hair, their works will be consumed with fire, which means they're going to lose rewards. And they, even though they will be saved like someone who is escaping the flame of a fire. So this is why it is very important for us to advance the kingdom of God while we are still alive. He talks about an abundant entrance. <laughs> Could means not everybody's going to have the same entrance. <laughs> there are those who will come in with abundance of entrance into the kingdom of God. <laughs> so what you do now matters a lot. Remember the Bible says, He that uh, turns many to righteousness shall shine like the stars forever and ever. He that wins soul Is, is smart. It's wise. So let us look. Think about it. Think about eternity. And lay up your treasures for that which will count for you in eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 12. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. Though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in this tent, to stay you up by reminding you. Knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a remainder of these things after my decease. Here, Paul, Peter talks about, I keep saying Paul. <laughs> so if you hear me say Paul in this teaching, I'm talking about Peter. <laughs> You know, we covered uh, uh, Paul, you know, way back. So uh, I, I'm still Sometimes we'll say Paul when I, I meant to say Peter, you know, so bear that in mind. Here, Peter says, he reminds us about uh, the power of repetition. The power of saying something and hearing something over and over again. You know the commercials. The TV commercials or radio commercials, they understand more about this uh, power of repetition. So this is the reason why they will pay so much money to bring their adverts to you, to the television. You remember sometimes when you hear an advertisement the first time, you got no clue what it's talking about. No, even if you have a clue of what he's talking about, you got no interest in it. <laughs> and then you hear it again. You hear it again, over and over again. <laughs> and then they put like a catching tune to it. So that when you hear that tune, you know exactly what that tune is all about. It's all about that advertisement. And then the more you hear about it, the more you begin to change your mind and by the time you know it, you are ordering that product or you are patronizing them. <laughs> this is the power of uh, repetition. Do you know that uh, 
the mind can retain something about only 25% when you hear something twice. 25%. Then the more you hear, the more you hear, the more the mind can retain. So, the same is in the word of God. The more we hear the word of God, the more faith will come because faith comes by continuous hearing of the word of God. Not by just hearing once. Continuous hearing. The word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. So, sometimes we hear about a, a scripture and, uh, and it, 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 this is a scripture that we've heard about so many times. But then, all of a sudden, you get revelation from that scripture. Even though you've heard about that scripture so many times. This is the way the word of God is. Peter here tells them that, uh, I know you've heard of these things before. But uh, I want to remind you again so that you can hear some more. And I'm going to put it in writing so that when I'm gone, <laughs> you will have something to remind you of these uh, important truths in the word of God. He talks about uh, putting off the tent. Putting off his tent. And uh, this is a metaphor for his body. For some of us who, when we look at the mirror, we see flaws, we see wrinkles, <laughs> and we are dissatisfied. We, we, we say, I don't like these things. I don't like the way I look. Uh, you know, I'm getting older. So, Peter tells us, don't worry about it. <laughs> this tent you look at here, he says it's going to be put off. You, you know what a tent is. If you go uh, camping, you've used a tent before. They are temporary things, you know. Sometimes they have holes in them and they are sagging. <laughs> and when the wind, strong wind comes, it takes them off. <laughs> so this is how the body is. The Bible say, tells us that, uh, 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 that uh, even though this tent is destroyed, we have a building of God not made with hands, eternal in heaven. Which means there is going to be a building that will replace this tent. And it says, this building is not made with hands. <laughs> and this building is going to last forever. What building is he talking about here? He's talking about your glorified body. So he says, don't worry about this body right now. He's going to be put aside and that's going to be a glorified body given to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope this serves as a consolation to some people <laughs> who worry so much about this uh, body that we have right now. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We're going to continue now in verse uh, uh, 16. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Here, Peter begins to counter false prophets. We're going to see more of this uh, the next chapter. False prophets. And the most notable of them is the, the, uh, uh, the, the Gnostics. 
The Gnostics are those who deny the deity of Jesus Christ and also the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Peter begins to tell his uh, uh, audience, uh, the congregation here, not to pay attention to these false uh, 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 prophets and their heresies, denying the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, his glory. We were there with him on the Mount of Transfiguration when he was transfigured in our presence. Who are we? He's talking about here. Who are we? He's talking about uh, James and John and all the apostles. He says, not only do we see the glory of Jesus Christ at the Mount of Transfiguration, we also heard the voice of the Heavenly Father saying that this is my begotten Son in whom I am well pleased. There is a, a parallel passage of uh, John saying the same thing. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, he says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched or handled with our hands, Concerning the word of life, declare we unto you. John says the same thing. They were eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ. But Peter takes it one step further. He says, if you don't want to go by personal uh, witnesses, I want you to go by... Uh, a, 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 a prophetic word of God. He says, you have the word of God with you. I want you to search out the scriptures. Find out what the Bible says about Jesus Christ, being the Messiah, being God. Do you know that uh, <clears throat> Jesus Christ fulfilled more than 300 uh, prophecies about his coming? His death, his resurrection. So many prophecies. For one person to fulfill more than 300 prophecies about him? Oh, I don't know how he can measure that statistics. I don't know how he can measure the odd. So many prophecies that Jesus Christ fulfilled. A virgin will conceive and have a son. So he shall be called a Nazarene. So out of Egypt I called my son. So he was numbered with transgressors in his death. So not a bone of his shall be broken. So, my Lord, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So many prophecies Jesus Christ fulfilled. And he says that through the word, this prophetic utterances, through the word of God, he says that you can now become a light. In a world that is full of darkness until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what the Bible says in Psalm 119, I believe it's in verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my own part. That's what the word of God does. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we are in verse um, 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy 
of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so he continues to give us the origin of the word of God, the authenticity of the word of God. The source of the word of God. So he said that uh, these prophetic utterances never originated from man. That's what he means by private interpretation here. The origin was not from man. But he says that man, uh, a holy man of God wrote as they were uh, 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 moved by the Holy Spirit of God. There are some who say that uh, these uh, authors who wrote the Bible, that uh, they wrote out of uh, uh, con conceptual inspiration. Could mean they got the concept from from God, but then they, they, they just uh, wrote. And that is not true. You see, the word of God is the breed of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, if you read from verse 16 to verse 17, Paul writing to Timothy says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God will be complete, thoroughly in all his ways. So you see here that are. Uh, the word of God, the scripture that you and I, we have, is not from man. It's not a revelation from man. To the, to the revelation that we get from God, he says, a man of God is equipped, thoroughly equipped, to every good work. So we see here, when somebody is trying to make a caricature of the word of God, or if somebody is trying to talk you from believing the, that the word of God is the true inspiration of, of God by his Holy Ghost, you've got to stand right here and give them the scriptures. That the word of God is a true inspiration of God, given by the Holy Spirit. Even though he used men to write the word of God, but they were carried along. Even though he used their own styles of writing, yet they were carried along by the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, what does the word of God say about his word? The word of God says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, I will watch over my word to perform it. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. For God is not a man that he should lie or son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and he will not do it? Has he spoken, and he will not make good of it? This is the genuity of the word of God. So my friends, when we hear about the word of God, it is very, very imperative for us to understand that this is not a word of man. That this is the word of God, creator of the heaven and the earth. The maker of all things, with whom all things are possible. He that knows the end from the beginning, 
He has no beginning and will have no end. He is the first and the last. The Alpha and the Omega. And this is his own word. And whatever he says in his word, he will do. For he is not a man that he should lie. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have come to the end of today's program. If you're under the sound of my voice, if you're not yet born again, now is an opportunity for you to come into the kingdom of God. Or perhaps you wandered away from Jesus. It's another opportunity for you to come home. There are so many people who don't understand what it means to be born again. To be born again means that uh, you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for your sins. God raised him up from the dead on the third day. Then you ask him personally to come into your life and be your Lord and your Savior and you begin a relationship with him. To be born again means that you put aside your own personal merits, your good works, and then you come as you are, and you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. That's what it means. There is no other way that you can do this apart from Jesus Christ. That is why he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. You see, Christianity is not a religion. For the simple truth that a religion, all the religions of the world, if you study them carefully, they are trying to do something to reach God, to have the favor of God. But in Christianity, it is a relationship between man and God. This is man receiving what God has made available for him. If you believe that you can have access to God, the Father, without Jesus Christ, then you are deceiving yourself. Because the Bible says that he that rejects the Son also will reject the Father. But he that has the Son also has the Father. Do not procrastinate and say, let me go and get my acts together and then I will come and then I will get born again. You don't have that time. And you couldn't do that anyway because you don't have the ability. Jesus Christ wants you to come as you were. And when you come as you are, he loves you so much that he's not going to leave you the same way that you came to him. The day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today is a day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Do not prolong it any longer. About 155,000 people died today. Just one day. And uh, where did they go? Now their eternal destination depends on what they did while they were alive. If they receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, they will spend eternity with God. But if they rejected him... The only option is hell. Hell is a real place where people who reject Jesus Christ as the Lord and as the Lord and Savior will spend eternity. Don't go that route. This is why I'm preaching the gospel to help you to choose heaven so that you don't go to hell. Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter three says. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will eat with him. He will also eat with me. It is a decision that you got to make. Friends will not make this decision for you. Your parents, your relatives, your uncles. No, you got to make this choice because God created you as a free mortal agent. And he gave you the right to make your own choices. So, you're going to be the one who's going to make this decision to come into the kingdom of God. But remember, while you are still alive, it's not too late. 
You can change the course of your eternal destination right now. And you can depart from that path that leads to hell. And take the path that will lead you now to eternal life with God the Father, Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. I'm going to lead you now in a very short prayer. If you pray this prayer, you will now be born again and you will have your eternity with God. Oh, what a blessing. He's not asking you to do any works. Rather, he wants you to receive what he has already done for you. So pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe he is your son. He died for my sins. You raised him up from the dead on the third day. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that I am now born again. My sins are forgiven. And I turn away from my sins. I believe that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Father, I give you glory for this. In the name of Jesus. If you pray that prayer, I welcome you into the kingdom of God. It is very imperative that you look for a church where they teach the word of God. So that you can grow in your faith. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. I want to use this opportunity to thank our partners all over the world. Those that are helping us through their finances, through their prayers and their services. To reach more people with the word of God. If you want to be a partner, please go to our website. It is kuim.org. Remember, friends, it is only those who hear the word of God and they put the word of God in practice. They are the ones who will reap the benefits of the word of God. I pray for you this day. May the Lord be with you. May he bless you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you rest, sound mind, peace in the midst of your trials and tribulations. And give you wisdom to make the right choices in life and provide for you and give you divine health and set you up upon the rock that is higher than you and bless the rest of your week. In the name of Jesus Christ, everybody say amen. Good friends, regardless of what you're going through, it's temporary. <laughs> Understand, surely that is an end. And your own expectations will never be cut off. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Baruch Hashem, Adonai, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, scandal la pradeste ingroshoku batia, radaska la patot. Mele vraganda me engrendem skibusko batia, arakato. Zuko pradeste mandele ele pradeste, kilo bosco, barabaste. Kill a master,